I'm working on a photo shoot of a well-respected doctor in Chicago who's not only a nice guy, but he's the chair of an anesthesiology department at a big-time hospital. He's doing a lot of teaching and lecturing these days, and he really needs a classy business portrait, and I'm just the guy for the job. We'll shoot a few versions of a formal portrait on location in his office or maybe a conference room. We've got about 90 minutes to set up, but only 10 minutes of his time to do the shoot. Not a problem. We'll go with my standard three light setup. That's a main light, a fill light, and a kicker light. All in wireless TTL exposure mode, and you get to come along. Great photographs are easy when you have the right light, and the Q-Flash system from Quantum makes great lighting simple. We've photographed a lot of executive types, and time is precious, particularly with a doctor of this caliber. So we want to be super prepared and stay as portable as possible, just in case there's a change in the doctor's schedule. So for this shoot, we're going to use a HDSLR, a high-end lens or two, and a three-light flash setup with a main, a fill, and one kicker light or hair light. Now I like to set up all the gear I need for a shoot like this ahead of time in my studio. That way I can pack it up in the appropriate cases with everything all set up, then pull them out on location and get to work. Let's get started with the main light. We've chosen the 26 inch octagon from Quantum that'll work well with any of our Q-flashes. And we'll light it up with a Q-flash T5DR, powered by a Turbo 3 battery for more flash pops than we're going to need and some really fast recycle time. This light will be delivering the primary exposure for us, and we want to take advantage of the wireless QTTL exposure modes to handle all that exposure for us. So let's attach the FW7Q receiver, set to channel one, and we'll mount the turbo onto the light stand using a QBC clamp, and power it up by pressing the turbo power button. Then, let's press the mode button, and I'll use the up or down button to hop on over to wireless remote group R2, which allows us to let this flash be controlled wirelessly right from the camera. Let's move on to the kicker light that we'll use behind the subject, pointing back towards him for some background separation. I'm going to use a traditional speed light for this, so I'll pull out one of my Nikon SB900s, and the Canon folks that are watching can certainly use one of their high-end Canon flashes here instead. Now, I'll wirelessly trigger this with a Q-Link, so that it'll work in wireless QTTL mode like the rest of my Q-Flash gear. Now, in case you're not familiar with the Q-Link, they connect to your Nikon or Canon speed lights with any of the wireless free X-Wire triggering gear, and they're pretty easy to use too. We'll start with a light stand, add a swivel adapter, then mount a turbo to power the speed lights so that it'll recycle faster than using the AA batteries that are inside. Now, I like to use the turbo blade for this because it mounts so easily to the Q-Link and to the light stand. Next, I'll attach the Q-Link to the blade and slide in the speed light. The radio end of the Q-Link is where you'll snap in a free X-Wire receiver. We need to use the simple and inexpensive FW8R for this. I'll flip up the zone switch, number one, and I'll pull up the antenna for the best possible reception. When you're powering up your Q-Flash, or typically any flash for that matter, it's best to turn them on from the top down. Let's start by powering up the flash by setting the main control switch, not to remote, but to on. That'll let the Q-Link take care of all the remote control stuff. We'll next set the mode to TTL. And that's it. No fuss with all the complicated groups and stuff inside the speed light menus. Forget it. Notice the AA batteries are inside this flash, but we'll fuel this flash with the turbo blade by pressing the power button next. Then we'll turn on the FW8R and check for its little LED light to confirm that it's ready to go. For my fill light, I'll use a Q-Flash Trio on the camera for these kind of shoots. This gives me the flexibility to have a nice fill light value no matter where in the room I'm actually shooting. And I'll use this without a light modifier and set its flash tube in the vertical position. This will send snappy light forward to my subject and throwing even more light bouncing around the room. I find this works great and makes it super easy too. Let's slide a trio into the hot shoe and connect it to a Turbo SC battery. 
and mount it to my tripod with another QBC clamp. And let's power it up by pressing the turbo power button and that'll light up the trio and turn the camera power on last. We want to set the trio to not only work as a flash, but we want to use its built-in radio trigger to control the remote flashes. So let's press the mode button and tap the plus or minus buttons to scroll through the menus and tap the set button to lock in the QTTL wireless ratio mode. That's going to show us a new display with the local flash on top and two different remote groups that I can use for one of each of my remote lights. And of course, that shows the TTL power settings for each one of those lights. Let me show you how it works. The top group here is my local flash. And that's the one that's connected to the camera. And its power, as you can see, is set to zero. Now that doesn't mean that it's turned off. Instead, it's telling you that the TTL exposure control compensation is set to zero. So it'll provide no change from a perfect TTL exposure but this is going to act as a fill light in this setup. And we want its TTL exposure to be less than the main light, right? How much less is actually up to you, but for this photo, I'll set it to one and a third stops less than the main light by pressing the set button one time and the minus button one, two, three, four times. And I'll leave the other two groups, that's the remote group R1, which is my speed light acting as the kicker light, set to zero compensation. And the main light, of course, also set to zero compensation. And that'll be controlled in our TTL system using remote group R2. The built-in radio triggering system in the Trio is so cool and it's very powerful. Gives you the freedom to work in wireless ratio mode like we're doing here with all kinds of confidence. Let's take a closer look. In the QTTL wireless ratio mode, the radio is turned on automatically. And its menu is right here on the soft key. It gives you the ability to select which channel you want to shoot on. Now, I typically stick with channel one with all of my Q-Flash gear, but you can mix it up if you are sharing the room with a second Q-Flash wireless shooter. In other Q-Flash modes, you'll see more options here, but the QTTL wireless ratio mode does it all for you. Sweet, huh? To finish my setup, I'll set the options that I want and save them all together in one program. First up, options. The audible beeper that signals when a Q flash recharges or when you make an exposure mistake is kind of loud. Now that's a good thing, but not so much in a hospital. So we'll turn off the beepers by pressing the options soft key here and tap the plus arrow until we get to the speaker setting where I'll turn it to off. And as long as I'm here, I'll turn off the visual indicators on the flash too. These are the little green blinky lights on the side of the trio that give you some signals on exposure. And they are very handy for sure, but I find them to be a little distracting to certain subjects when you shoot up close like we plan to with the doctor. So in the options menu, we'll scroll using the plus button to land on the flash indicators menu. And we'll set that to off. And finally, we want to store all the settings of the trio together into one program so just in case we accidentally bump something, we can simply recall the program settings and get right back to work. To save the settings that we just made, I'll tap the save soft key and the display asks me if I want to save this to program P1. I select save and there it is, saved to program P1. And there's eight program slots available too, so if I need to recall any program, I press the mode button and the program soft key and locate the program number I need. It's that easy. Cool, right? The office, very nice. A little bit cramped for us, particularly with the video guys here too, but we've got a shot put together where the dock's going to be just like this. Now he's a, a little shorter than I am. And I'm going to place him kind of rotated on the corner of the desk like this. And you'll see that I've got my main here. It's about four feet away. And you'll see that it's up a little high there. I'm probably going to move that in a little bit closer and down a little bit lower when I actually get the doctor in on the set. Fill light is going to be the trio on the camera. Of course, everything's wirelessly controlled. And you'll also see that the trio there is in the bare bulb in the vertical position. And it's going to send light throughout this room. Now, the walls on this room are a bluish gray, and that color does concern me a little bit, but I will use a custom white balance here in order to get rid of any color cast from my main fill combination. So, 
high-end HDSLR camera, 85mm f1.4 lens, Trio on the camera, T5DR right here, and let me show you what I'm going to use for my kicker light. We've got the Q-Link fired up back here. This is going to be your basic Nikon speed light set to a narrow zoom. So I'm going to manually adjust the zoom so it's going to throw a little bit of light down here. Now I may actually do some shots without this because I really like how this background plays. So take a look at this. Okay, sir. There you go. Yep. Head tilt a little bit this way. There you go. Good. These are the typical suggestions that I give to a subject on a shoot so that we can turn them in and out of the light as needed to really kind of sculpt a more of a three-dimensional look to the photo. I know, it's like a game of inches, isn't it? There you go. Chin down a little bit, Doc. Thanks, buddy. Good. Now, the fill light here pointed straight up like that. I know some of you are looking at that and thinking, wow, that's really crazy. But no matter if I move the camera back into this further away position, or if I move it forward closer to the subject, I'm still getting the same quality fill light because the majority of that light is going backwards and sideways. And the TTL exposure mode, of course, uh, takes care of any sort of exposure issues and gives me the same ratio between my main light and my fill light. Right there. That's it. Yep. Point your nose a little more this way. Now you will notice in the video here, it looks like sometimes the lights are not firing, but that's just the video. Remember, the video recording here uses a shutter speed as well. And if the shutter speed and flash sync of my camera are not happen to be matching with the video camera, then you don't see the flash firing. But each one of these are, are firing. You wanna see? Sure. Got a handsome you look. The color combo is not bad, right? Really nice, don't you think? Well, I, I, I kind of, you know, debated it a little bit this morning at 5.30 in the morning. That's good thinking. Do you do all your, because you're snazzy time. dresser, you're into Thank it. You. Yeah, I'm looking at it. These type of portraits are things that I've been doing for years, actually decades, so I'm extremely comfortable with them. One of the ways that I like to shoot these, as you just saw, is on a location instead of in a studio, but in an environment where the doctor or the business person is very comfortable. This office was a place where the doctor was very comfortable and I was able to use that nice fill light value, right? That's a big deal. Taking that cue flash, pointing it straight up on the camera, making that light bounce around the room as well as a little sparkle forward is a big plus. My headshots have that nice quality. One of the reasons why that fill light not only is bouncing for soft, but it's also given me some sparkle. The set of images that we have created are from half length to a tighter style headshot, and I'd love to show them to you. You ready? First up, here are one of the earlier shots where you see the doctor in a half length, and this is always very good in case they want to use it, say, for the book cover or a jacket cover. Sometimes on a website, if they have a long vertical spot, this is a good idea. But then we move in in order to get the shot that we came for, and there it is. Yep, that's a really terrific shot. Doctor loves it, by the way. He's very happy. One of the things that made that shot for us was the ability for us to take that Q-Link and put that SB900, that small battery-powered flash, into the bookcase for the doctor. Now, we could have used a Trio there. Physically, the Trio's really not that much bigger in that type of setup than the Speedlight, but the Speedlight allowed us to squeak a light in there, get the kicker light value that we wanted, and have it work in full TTL mode with everything else. Although I do have to share with you, that was a little slower. When we fired, oh, maybe the 14th, 15th shot, I was shooting a little fast. And the Trio gear, as well as the T5 gear, kept up with me, right? Because it recycles real fast. Well, that SB900 in the back there was starting to slow down in the middle of the shoot because it was actually getting hot. That's one of the things we have to deal with. Heat, when it comes to small speed lights, slows them down after a while. If we were to use quantum gear, we wouldn't have been slowed down one inch. So, great shot with a great blend of Q-Flash plus speed lights. I hope you like it as much as the doctor does. There's plenty more great Q-Flash video tips from Will Crockett, as well as other top photographers, available for you free of charge at QTM.com.